All right, welcome. Um, today we're going to take a look at what it takes to build a very simple uh, web app uh, using Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio web forms. So I'm going to try to uh, simulate uh, what it would take to build a screen that looks kind of like this mock-up. So assuming we've built some type of mock-up of what the page looks like, and now we're trying to implement that in Visual Studio, what are the steps that, that I involve? So I have a login screen with a username, field, password field, and a button. I, and we've got a little image in here. Um, by the time we're done, you'd have the basic idea of what it takes to build a very simple web app in Visual Studio. Assuming you have the right workload, uh, meaning the ASP.NET workload installed, um, you will start by opening up Visual Studio, go to File New Project, File New Project, and then you want to make sure you have Visual C Sharp selected. Select the web uh, subcategory here, and then we'll look we're looking for ASP.NET Web Application.NET Framework, Visual C Sharp. Make sure that's selected. Uh, pay attention to where you're saving your files to because you're going to need to find it to upload your work uh, to wherever you need to, D2L or, or whatever content system you're going to be uploading it to. In this case, I'm going to name this uh, simple app. You can name yours Lab 4 uh, or whatever uh, makes the most sense to you. Right, so simple app is what I'm going to name mine. Notice the solution name is also simple app. I'm going to leave this in my repo directory. You might save this to your um, desktop or wher wherever it's going to be easier for you to find the main folder and zip it. Right, so I'm going to click on OK. I get a nice tab. Make sure this is still select empty is what is selected. Uh, I might have shown you an option where you select web forms. Maybe in the past, uh, don't use that going forward. Use empty. Right, it's going to, make, going to make life a lot easier for finding files. Um, then select this checkbox called Web Forms. We'll come back and talk about the other templates. Hit OK. Uh, Visual Studio is going to take its time and it should bring up something that looks like this. Um, we're not interested in any of these, so we're going to close out of this first screen uh, so we have a blank slate. So in the Solution Explorer, you're going to see a bunch of different files and folders. Don't worry too much about what these are. Uh, these are kind of templates to give you some plumbing for building a web page, right? We're going to start by adding a new web form. A web form is basically a web page in ASP.NET. ASP.NET is a technology for building websites using the Microsoft stack, right? So I'm going to select this project level, not the solution level, the project level. I'm going to right-click on that, click on Add, Add New Item, New Item up top. Right, that brings me a little pop-up, and I want to select web form. Um, the first page that shows up uh, in an ASP.NET website is called default.aspx. I'm going to change this to default.aspx. Um, that is likely to be on a quiz question. So default.aspx uh, useful uh, to make sure when you launch your website, that's the first page that would display by default. Uh, you could change that, but we won't worry too much about that. So default.aspx. We're going to hit Add, and then we'll add that. Uh, if you know HTML, this will give you a very standard HTML page. <clears throat> but since we don't know HTML yet, or I'm assuming you don't, we're going to need to select the Design tab. Look at where my mouse is, Design. That's going to give us a nice blank um, screen like this, right? And now we're going to do pretty much what you might have done with Mockingbot. We're going to drag and drop controls on here. Um, to do this, we need the toolbox. So I'm going to click on toolbox and set a pin to it. Set that pin so it, it's, it's not hidden anymore because you're going to need this going forward. Right? So I've got my toolbox, my solution explorer, my properties window. I have an error list here that might show me some errors. And now we're ready to do some work. Um, we'll start off by adding, uh, before we add uh, some controls, I want to show you, if you can't find a toolbox, you go down under View. Um, you should be able to scroll down and see Toolbox, and that should open that window. So if this window is missing, or any of these windows don't show up for you, they're going to be under the View tab, right? Um, so let's bring back our reference image. We want to add some type of image, um, some type of text input, a text box, another text box, and a button control. Text boxes 
um, allow you to create user entered data. So users can actually type in some stuff. Uh, label controls, on the other hand, are read only. Image controls, you probably know what that is, and a button. So we'll start with those. Now, to structure a web page in ASP.NET, uh, we're going to want to drag and drop all the widgets that we need, all controls, if you will, into this box, right? But I need a way to structure that first. Now, this is going to break all the rules of CSS, uh, but it helps us build websites quickly. So we're going to use something that's called tables. In the real world, you probably would not be building web pages with tables uh, because we want to build this pretty quickly. Um, we're going to search in the toolbox for table. You're going to get two tables that show up, one under the standard category and one under the HTML category. For the sake of this class, never use this standard table. Always use the HTML table. Again, let me stress that. Use the HTML, HTML table. Never the standard table will make life a lot easier. So I'm going to drag and drop this guy into this box. The reason why I'm using that is by default I get three rows, three columns. If I were to drag and drop this other table, I don't see any columns, rows uh, in here. So it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to manipulate this. Right? So I'm going to delete that and we'll keep this guy. Um, I'm looking to add an image so I can search for image in the toolbox. Um, for the sake of what we need to do, now think the opposite. The only time we would use something under the HTML category if, is if we're adding tables. Everything else would be under the standard category. Right? So I'm going to add an image in the middle of this, right? and I'm going to make that. Uh, I need to bring in an image later on, but don't worry too much about that yet. Right? So that's, that's a placeholder for the image. I can maybe enlarge it. Or whatever is I see fit, right? Then I need some type of a label. Uh, a label control uh, would allow me to add some read-only text um, to this page. So I'm going to have label, uh, and then labels or all controls have properties. We're going to come in and give all these controls some properties. But for now, I'm going to have this is going to be the username label. And I actually want to represent the text box where users are going to be typing in their username in this field. Right, so I've got label, some text box. I happen to realize that I need some additional rows. Um, so I'm going to highlight these guys, these two. Right click, insert. Uh, and I'm going to do insert row below. So I'm going to add some additional rows um, to this table really not that hard. I need a few more rows. Okay, good. And then I'm going to do a control C or command C if you're on uh, the Mac. Control C if you're on Windows. And control V, command V to paste, right? So now I've got a username box and then the password box. Uh, then I'm going to add a button control. And this button control goes right there, right? Um, I can stretch this out so it's got the same um, width. I can maybe make this, space this out a little bit, um, or whatever I see fit, right? All right, so now let's do work on the next step. The next step is to try to change this uh, control. So every control has what's called properties. Controls, properties. Properties are just attributes of that control, things that describe that control, right? The most important of them all is the ID field. So every control has an ID, right? And we're going to use a naming convention that you find in your lecture slides. So label controls would have a naming convention where we would use LBL as the prefix of the name of the control. And then I'm going to name this LBL username because this is going to be the username field. Right, and we'll see the usefulness of this when we start writing code. But every control needs a unique ID, right? You can't have two controls that have the same name. So LBL name LBL is short for label, right? Then I'm going to scroll up and look for the text field. The text field is what's actually displaying up here. So I want this to say username, um, like that, with a colon. So now when I move away from that or click somewhere else, you can see that that's that's displaying in here. 
I'm going to do the same. Well, I'm going to set the ID for the text box, right? Text box, the prefix is going to be TXT. I'm going to use the same name so I can identify. This is a text box username. Notice this is TXT username, which is different from LBL username, right? And this time I'm not going to set the initial text of that. The text boxes uh, are usually blank by default, especially for web pages. So we'll leave that blank. I'm going to select this other label. First thing I'm going to do again is change that ID to LBL password, right? LBL password. And the next thing I want to do is change that to um, password colon, something like that, right? Uh, then I'm going to change this ID. Every Each one of these controls, we're going to set an ID for that, right? So we're going to select each of those uh, and set that. So this is going to be TXT password. And we're not going to change any property of this. Uh, you can play around with the properties as you see fit. You can change colors, all kinds of fancy stuff, completely up to you. Now we're going to set the ID of the button control. Uh, for this, we're going to do BTN login. So this is my login button. And the inscription on that button is going to be um, sign in, right? I'm just showing you the difference here. So this is the sign in button. Uh, so a user is going to see that uh, and potentially click on sign in. Um, so let's go ahead and look at what it takes to bring in an image. So I've already saved that image. Um, assuming you want to add an image, um, you can bring in an image um, by uh, right-clicking on here, add, um, we could say add existing item. Uh, add existing item is then going to try to pick from some folder. So I've got an image in my repos folder called download, right? So I brought in that image. That image is here. Um, ideally, you want to create a folder for images, so I'm going to create one. You can right-click and do Add New Folder, just so you can organize all your images in a single folder. Um, and I'm going to add this download image into that folder. Just drag and drop it in there, right? So now when I go to this image, the first thing we want to do with this is actually set an ID for this as well. This is going to be IMG uh, um, logo. For example, right? this might be your product image for your assignment or something like that. But give it a name. Uh, this must be a unique name with no spaces, no special characters, right? And try to use the right prefixes. You find the directions in your lecture slides. Uh, the next important thing property to do to set here for an image is the image URL. Okay, this is going to tell the image where to where to find the actual uh, image file. So I'm going to click on that three dots, and it's going to point me to my folder structure in the Solution Explorer, and now I'm selecting the download image specifically. Notice your images have to be this format. So if you downloaded an image that's not one of these formats, you're going to want to go back and find an image that's a JPEG, BMP, ideally PNG would work best. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK. Now I've got my image. Uh, I can make it larger, um, do whatever makes the most sense to me. So that's that's a pretty nice design. Uh, I feel comfortable with it. Um, to now run this and make sure it works, uh, you want to click on this um, little green icon. This would load based on your web browsers that you have installed on the machine. I only have Chrome at this point, so I'm going to fire that up in Chrome. So you click on that. That's going to launch Chrome. And hopefully we're going to be able to see this. The first time you do this, uh, it takes Visual Studio a while, so you give it some time to compile this. Uh, all right, so now I've got this uh, nice web page, and I can actually click on some stuff and click sign in, so on and so forth. We haven't written any code yet, um, so we you know don't have the ability um, to go to a page or show any errors or anything like that. Don't worry too much about it; it's just a basic design, right? Uh, some of the things we could do is change the colors. I'm going to show you how to change the text box. So um, usually for passwords, you want to see um, some type of dots um, as you're typing in your password. You don't want to be able to see somebody's password, especially if somebody's shoulder surfing. You want to guard against that. 
So when you want to go back and work in Visual Studio, um, I would strongly recommend you close this window out or click this stop debugging uh, window. Lots of people forget to click on stop debugging and they wonder why the um, uh, app isn't allowing them to change it, right? So click on that to stop debugging. So now you can actually make edits. First thing I'm going to do is go back and change this password field so we can actually uh, have it behave like a typical um, password field. So we don't have to write any code for that. Uh, select the text mode property. There should be an option for password, right? This password. And, and there are lots of different options. You can mess around with it depending on what you're doing. Uh, so now that I made that change, I'm going to do Control S to save or uh, click on this to save all, right? And now I'm ready to fire this off and test it again. And when you're building software, you need to get comfortable with testing multiple times, right? So you might make a change, test it. Now you can see the username field allows me to type some text. The password is masked, right? You can't see. I'm actually typing in some values, but you can't see it right now, right? So I've got the right functionality for this, uh, and I'm comfortable with it. Um, because I put in tables, uh, I put in tables because I wanted to be able to control um, the structure of this. Um, kind of helps a little bit sometimes, it won't look exactly as you need it to. Um, you can change the background color, do all kinds of fancy things. Um, ideally, if we knew uh, something about CSS, we can make this look a lot prettier. But if you have a lot of time, there are lots of design options that you can mess around with. Um, one of which might be maybe we want to change this. Um, font size. So I can select maybe these guys and make some changes as I see fit. Um, there is, I'm going to select this whole table. There are some options under the format. So format, font, I can go change this to some um, font that perhaps I'm comfortable with. Let's say this guy. Uh, maybe I want to use this color. Uh, I want to make things bold. I'm going to select something like that. Right? Um, and you can change all kinds of properties about this um, and improve your design. It's completely up to you and how much time you have and exactly how you want it to look like. So that's a basic idea of how to build a very simple web page uh, using ASP.NET. Uh, we would use tables to structure things. Also keep in mind you can have a table inside of a table um, and you can maybe change the background um, color of this, um, so on and so forth. Right. Um, that concludes what we need to cover for this. Uh, hopefully, uh, once you're done, you want to um, figure out where you had your, you saved your folder, zip the entire contents of the folder, the parent folder, and upload it um, to D2L or where you need to push it to. Right. That concludes what we need to cover. Have a good uh, rest of your day. Take care.